Does this look stupid? Can I sit like this like the whole time? That probably looks a little stupid. If I'm gonna do that, I probably should tilt the camera. I just wanna relax a bit, you know? Can we relax? Can we have a, can we just have like a, a one-on-one -on -one conversation about these struggles as a digital artist? Now, I'm not saying that I'm struggling. I'm fine, guys. But there's always this little bit of uh, noise inside my head that's uh, worried that I'm becoming too dependent on the digital tools. What I mean is, okay, I have this like nagging fear. I mean, I don't lay awake at night thinking about it, but I imagine being at a party where we're all playing Pictionary and everybody's excited to, to have me on their team because, because I'm the artist. I post all these amazing pictures online of, of all this art. So surely I would be good at Pictionary. But if, I, if that was ever the case, I would just, I, I would completely blow it. Like, I'm, this is one like artistic aspect about me like like I don't excel in I don't excel in line drawing I don't excel in like just creating the simple list images I had an art teacher once and she would draw on the marker board all the time these like incredible drawings as she was talking through her lectures and I was just blown away by that and that was a skill that I always kind of wanted but it was never the path that I ever seem to go down like like my artistic calling took me more into color into light to, to portraits landscapes not you know like doodles is a bad word but you know like pictionary drawings or or comic strips or cartoons or just like simplified drawings of reality and I just that to me is an artist what I do is I'm not gonna be that hard on myself because it, it is art digital art is art but listen guys at the end of the day I hate that phrase by the way I had a boss that would say that all the time like after every sentence he would say at the end of the day anyways at the end of the day digital art is easier it straight up it's just easier um you have all these tools at your disposal you don't have to get toxic paint out you can easily trace anything um you can check your work a lot easier you can check your colors easier with the eyedropper tool doing like an oil painting is a lot harder i mean even if you wanted to trace you'd have to get the projector out or get some kind of technique where you rub one side and then transfer it on like I mean that's it just gets a lot of work or if you wanted to do the grid method like even cheating at uh, traditional is harder and I, that that's why I have just so much more respect for traditional artists that can uh, wield just simple pencil and paper and that's, uh, I can do okay with pencil and paper, but you have to leave me alone for like hours to like grid out the paper and like grid, like get, you have to leave me in my laboratory for a little bit before I can show you something. If you call me out in Pictionary and I have to draw a horse, it's gonna look like, just like anybody could do it. It's gonna look like shit. So that's the, the struggle that I have with being a digital artist is I feel like I'm not challenging myself the way traditional artists challenge themselves. It's a different environment. And one hand, I don't support that because I feel like the fundamentals of learning how to draw with just simple pencil and paper um, are crucial to harnessing your your artistic development and and all that you guys you get what i'm saying and but on the other hand i support it because if you're gonna be painting in photoshop or some digital like procreate you take advantage of those tools like don't don't limit yourself to just 
uh, oh, this isn't what people would do traditionally. Oh, I can't use control Z because that doesn't exist in reality. Bullshit. Like, you're only limiting yourself by thinking that way. So, use the liquify tool. You know, start cutting out pieces and transforming it. Use the perspective grid lines and everything. Uh, use, a, use the transform tool to help with your perspective. Like use all these color balance, levels, all these little touches that can make your painting a lot better. You know, that's one thing that I struggle with because every portrait that I do, I am cutting out pieces. Like usually I'll paint the eyes way too big it's something I do, and it drives me crazy because they're all, every time, like, okay, check this out. We'll go into here. Okay, so this is Undertaker, as you guys know, because you guys are all wrestling fans. Um, and I've been working on this portrait for like an hour, and it's it's still in the early stages. It's in that stage of make a mark and then. You make a mark and then you uh it's wrong and then you have to correct it that's that's kind of how i paint um but my point was this is why digital is so cool like what what is stopping me from just pasting this in here scaling him up turn like i mean i could at this point i could just trace and then i think well, that's not what you could do traditionally. And so it's kind of always like, where's that line of what I should do to to just make a better painting or what, you know, uh, what's cheating? Did I say that right? Who cares? I used to trace portraits and then I would throw away the drawing um, or the, the photograph and then I would paint over top of it and add in my own impressionistic strokes. For me, on an internal level, and this is something different for everybody else, for me that, that felt, well, for one, it felt boring. There was no struggle. There was no impressionistic touch. There was no artistic eye. It was a one-for-one -one outline of that face and yeah i painted over top and that's where i added my creativity but it just didn't have that certain challenge that i that i needed to be fulfilled as an artist and 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 yeah it kind of did feel like cheating so that's that's for me where i drew the line so i don't trace anymore if i was going to i would do it only to double check my work because I think you can learn a lot from that. Like what I'm doing here, like you you probably don't want to put these on your speed art videos. You don't want to show people that you're, you know, hacking the system. But I think that's what a lot of people do. And when you're working, uh, now, okay, so I take this back a little bit. If you're working for a customer that, of a portrait and you just wanted to get it right, there's no point in not tracing. There's no point in not tracing because if they're if they like your work for your colors and your brushwork and everything, you want to represent them for who they are. You don't need to challenge yourself and take the longer road, which is ultimately going to get you to the same point. So just do a quick little tracing. But that's where I stand. But for like Instagram photos and stuff like this, I don't want to keep tracing unless unless somebody's paying me to do the best work that I possibly can do then then I'll trace now of course if you are a character designer or a uh, maybe a character artist or somebody that just has a more impressionistic touch to their painting then yeah maybe tracing probably isn't the right idea I'm just saying if you do more realistic art you know you, you give the client a good painting it's not a bad idea to trace. I mean, they just want a good painting, right? So, I mean, we don't have to uh, always be so hard on ourselves and take the difficult route. I mean, unless you're just really good at what you do and you don't need to trace. But sometimes taking that extra shortcut isn't too bad. But if it's, yeah, for, 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 for me, as like to grow my artistic skills, um, 
I like to, to not do it unless I'm just checking my work for for like this. And you know, that's that's one of those lines where you got to figure out are you okay with something like that? Are you okay with tracing? Um so yeah, you can see like I'm already starting to see like yeah, you know, the eyes are probably too big. They probably need to be moved down a little bit. Um I feel like I was going somewhere with that before. Digital painting is easier because there's nothing stopping me from doing that. I can I drop the colors and look at look can we just take a side step over here for a moment? Look at this. Uh let's uh there's so many awesome tools in here that can help you. Okay, this is what I'm supporting here is embrace into the fact that you are working digitally. Okay, you're working in this world with all these techniques and all these different tools that you can use. And if you're not using them, then you're only limiting yourself. And uh, some other artists will be using them and be doing better work because of it. At the, I mean, is it better to be a better technical artist or to have better results right like i don't know but look at this crazy cool neutral filters this blew my mind and i it just sickens me just a little bit but also i get a little excited for the possibility colorize is now a thing and you can just take any black oh my god <laughs> like what the heck that is pretty much done is it not not really because i'm gonna i'm gonna follow the current color scheme with the blue um but i mean that's a good good start i mean damn like i was taking um let's let's just go in here and go to um audrey hepburn and uh move it undertaker let's uh let's she's so adorable i mean come on Let's see what it does for this photo. No, filter, neutral filters, and colorize. Holy shit. <laughs> now, if you're in a world where your business solely runs on colorizing photos, this is a game changer. People may lose their jobs. This is, I mean, somebody's got to click those buttons, right? So, but for as a digital artist, does this make people worried? Does does tools like this scare anybody? Do you start to question what your value as a digital artist when now they can do this? What's stopping them from going? F okay, so have you guys seen this little thing here? nvidia canvas this video has went off onto its own world we are okay all you have to do is select okay we want some grass we paint some grass bam we got some grass that's a little dark let's uh okay we got some grass what about some mountains let's paint some mountains some happy little mountains as they say it's looking a little okay okay holy crap Let's put some clouds in there that's a little weird that one's that one sucks but you can see the potential stones what's this water put some water here <laughs> oh my god like this could be what's this one okay it just changes the the color this could be like a new way to start photo bashing like if you have an idea first we talked this about this in the last video um or one of the last videos is it's better to start with an idea first than just rushing into it but once you have an idea and then you kind of start sketching things out in here where it's already like searching the internet for photos to place strategically in here to kind of make this scene for you and then you could just take that and start painting on top of it so i mean one, you kind of want to embrace this technology, but at the same time, we're kind of like, whoa, what were you doing my job? You taking my job? Because I think I think you got to learn to to take these tools and make them your own. Don't let the AI completely take it. Now, if they were, now, 
Okay, so there was this one filter. Like, what if they were able to take an artist like Van Gogh, and I feel like I saw this somewhere. They they can run it through their computer, the algorithm, and it can see similar brush strokes and styles and colors, and then you can take a photograph like Audrey Hepburn and say, make this photo like a Van Gogh painting. That's what's scary, because if it can do that, then it's like, holy crap, what is my value now as an artist? If a computer can just take any photograph and replicate my personal style, I mean, that would be, that would suck. Because it's then, then it's like, what can I do to change it up? And then if, like, if you change it up, you just add that new information to the computer and it's like, oh, we already got you covered there. But I mean, that's if you, if you have the perfect photograph, right, for that, um, that picture that you want to paint, like portraits. But if you're creating like concept art that's all new stuff, I don't really see technology getting us quite there. I think there will always have to be that human element to help out with that. I just wanted to talk about the the internal struggles of a digital artist, um, at least for me. And maybe it is just me. Maybe Maybe nobody else really has a problem with this kind of stuff. But for me, like... When a, when a person sees an oil painting, just a normal guy off the street, when he sees an oil painting, he can understand what went into to doing that. And if you show that person a digital painting of a photo, they could appreciate it for art, but they really don't really understand, oh, you did it on a computer? You just pressed a button? Uh, that's kind of what they think. And, oh, my God, it's almost getting to that point, is it not? Uh, no, we're still far away, I think. We're still far away. Um, you have to enjoy the process, too. And as long as you enjoy the process, they, they can't take anything from you because you're doing it for yourself. I'm painting this Undertaker not because um, there, there's already amazing photographs of him. Why, why paint a picture? Well, because I'm, I'm adding my own spin to it. And that's why I'm not tracing either, because those screw-ups, those little mess-ups of where my eye can't see what's wrong with it, adds that artistic charm um, and makes it my own. And, you know, I'm selfish. I'm all about me. I want to make things my own. Um, so that's, that's why it's fun. This has been a energetic video. I haven't done one of these in a while. Usually it's kind of like monotone. And those are fine videos too, but my wife's out today, so I can be as loud as I want. Yep, <sighs> loud as I want. I don't know. All right. I'm just starting to ramble now, so I guess this whole video was kind of a ramble. But if you guys made it this far, I want to thank you. I've been getting a, a few subscribers lately. That that one video I did on the, the landscape and photo bashing. I uh, did is doing pretty good 5,000 views uh, that's pretty cool um, and I'm almost up to 400 subscribers so since since people are here now and there's at least 20 of y'all watching uh, I figured it'd be cool to make another video for you give you something to watch so let me know in the comments below do you guys struggle with being a digital artist? Do you sometimes feel like it's too easy and that you need to limit yourself with the digital tools to, to feel better as an artist because that's not how traditional art is being made. So you should limit yourself. <laughs> like, Do you guys ever feel that way? Let me know down below. All right, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.